Once again, today we are dealing with a animal whose fur and skin is way extended off their body. They look like super squishy creatures, and we don't see a lot of their muscular or skeletal anatomy on their body types. But again, um, as a broken record, I always like to say that knowing this stuff still helps to inform you when you're making your own imaginative decisions uh, about what you're drawing. And if you're going to start drawing cartoony uh, raccoons or animals, it's always good to have an understanding of how something looks realistically. So here we have a skeletal structure of the raccoon. And we see a couple things. Um, we see that they have a really nice and long spinal cord, which, again, it can be very flexible. They can really be bendy if they need to be. They got a nice long tail. Um, and you can see, too, that there's a lot of similarities here in a, a cat's anatomy as well. I would say really the only difference is that these bone structures, they're just a little bit longer than we see on a cat. Um, again, too, we have a little more of finger-like features here on the hands, right? Their little hand feet. Um, it's because they hold things. They physically hold things, kind of like a squirrel. This does not mean they have thumbs, though. Um, but they do have very kind of like dexterous like hands that can hold objects. They, if you've ever seen them eat, they kind of pick it up and put it in their mouth rather than just kind of like scooping it in their mouth like a cat or a dog. And for the head, we have a nice big kind of ovalish shape right here, which we're going to look a little more into when it comes to the anatomy and stuff because they do have like a snout that on their face sticks out a little bit. So it's not going to look exactly like that, but we'll get some references. So I know I've said this in a few of my videos, but I gotta give it to the raccoon. Finding anatomy for the raccoon was almost impossible. Other than skeleton structures, I legitimately could not find muscle anatomy. So I do want to be just honest that this is not raccoon muscular structure. This is actually the muscle structure of a red panda, which is actually considered to be closely related to um, the raccoon. Um, so that was, that was something I was reading. So we can kind of take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, but we can kind of understand that these are creatures that do move in a similar way. They do have kind of like similar functions in some ways where they can climb on things, hang on trees, that stuff. So we know that their muscles in terms of what they do in nature function the same. So therefore we do have a similar structure. Um, as you guys can see here too, anyways, really what we're looking at and what we've been seeing with all these animals that kind of walk on four feet is that they all do have pretty similar muscle structures. What we see here is not too dissimilar from the cat video, for example. So we're starting to get kind of like a sense of similarity here, right? Something that we can see is that um, we know that they have a nice long torso with this long abdomen area. Again, we have these really thick back muscle legs here. Um, we wanted to be considering that because we know they use them as well as they have a really extensive kind of like forearm flexors because they do climb trees and they do hold on. Um, so in order not to fatigue when they're climbing and just kind of hanging there and holding, like if you've ever hung off something, you'll notice that your grip starts to slip and all that stuff. They have quite the intricate muscle structure in there as well as up here in their you know, like bicep, tricep area if we're comparing it to um, human anatomy. Um, but otherwise from there, we do have just pretty much similar stuff. We don't have an overly protruding chest, kind of stays tucked in. We don't have any kind of collarbone area sticking out. Of course, we have that nice long puffy tail. And with the red panda, we're seeing a little bit of a smaller head, but we know with the raccoon, we have a little bit of a longer and more narrow kind of snout coming off the face. So I thought one thing I would help with this video would be to show some cartoony examples of how other artists have dealt with raccoons um, because there are a couple iconic raccoons that exist in cartoon history. Um, most notably, we have the raccoon over here from Pocahontas and then of course the more recently popular rocket raccoon from the Gardens of the Galaxy. Um, so two different types, right? Uh, we have one raccoon that's a little more cartoony uh, you can definitely see what we're looking here for mainly is the shape breakdown. So we have this kind of pointy football kind of shape here for the head. 
Um, really, we're just blocking in some of that eye shape. We're looking for that, that fur pattern shape. And then the structure of, you can see that the way they drew the feet kind of interacting with the skin is that their skin and their body kind of flops over their feet, which is true when we see it into some realistic photos that we're going to look at in a second. So in the comic book world, we have something that's a little more realistic, but at the same time, just as stylized. So, but you can see kind of sticking true to it. We do still have that pointy, really playing with those like cheek fluff kind of look for the raccoon face. Um, a little more dramatic on the mouth structure than we'd see on an actual raccoon. But overall, the face structure, pretty similar to how we would see in a cartoony version and versus a photo as well. All right, so let's kick this off with some shape deconstruction here of our photo and just start with something that's simple like the head before we move into full body raccoons. So let's use a little bit of what we just saw with the cartoony raccoons to kind of figure out our shapes here. So with the head, we saw that they did something a little more pointy for those cheeks. So we're gonna kind of find that pointy look in there. You can see where they were getting that idea from. Not every raccoon is gonna have um, that really kind of pointed off, almost whiskerish kind of look to it. But you can really play with that shape. They do have something that's a little more similar to that. They always have these really nice round ears. So you can kind of draw like hill structures there for that. And then I like to just kind of come in and draw the mouth as an oval shape. You can also see the mouth possibly as a little bit of a trapezoid kind of shape. However you guys like to do it, I know I'm gonna come in and reconstruct this anyway, so just to kind of get my ground drawing in there, I like to just see it as like a circle that I know I'm gonna come in and build upon. So next I like to get my angle in there so I know which way we're looking. This tells me that there's less head on this side and more head to draw on this side, right? If you want, you can go ahead and make the pattern, the raccoon eye pattern, a part of your drawing as well, your under drawing. And then from there, we don't see too much information regarding the, the body necessarily, but if you guys want to just kind of put an indication in there, you can put an indication in there. Move this guy over to the side and give it a try ourselves. All right, so remember, we are just focusing on the head for this one, so don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just basically thinking about the cartoons we looked at, because um, I know I talk about Disney a lot, but Disney really was kind of like the master of breaking down animals into super cute but really workable figures, right? So <laughs> I'm sticking with that structure. I'm looking over my cheat sheet. I'm thinking about that pointy football kind of a shape and just kind of placing my stuff in, right? So everything's just a placeholder right now. I can always change it. And so I just kind of want to work quick with when I'm doing my, my underdrawing. So then I can always really mold it how I want when I come back for my finished drawing on top of my light line work, right? So we're just kind of building that structure in I want to think about the nose as like a 3D box in a way, kind of like you're seeing the front and the top, but you can't really see the, the back of it maybe because the, the box is inserted into the face. So that's how I like to think of that because they have a really nice um, square nose on their face there. All right, and then with the raccoon, it really helps to kind of throw in that eye pattern first to help you find where that eye is. If you guys notice, the eyes actually kind of sit right there at the top of that the black pattern where it meets their like kind of white looking eyebrows. So that helped me to really find um, where their eyes were when I was drawing these guys. <clears throat> so if you can find a spot where you're happy with the little black mask, the little robber black mask that they have, then you'll definitely be happy when you place the eyes in there. And you gotta throw on the eyebrows because it gives them their little raccoon expressions. And of course that light indication of the body and finish it off with some little details. So I threw this part in too. Uh, this was from the opening, but I wanted to throw this in just cause I went over with just some light shade. This was still, I was using the pencil tool um, and I thought it was kind of a cool opportunity to show you guys like you really only need a pencil when you're drawing raccoons because they literally are just 
shades of gray, right? They, they have black, they have light gray, mid, mid-tone gray, whites. Um, so you can be erasing your line, darkening your lines. I wanted the eyes to be really expressive, so I made the eyes one of the darkest things on the page. And I'm, I'm just thinking about everything as a 3D shape when I'm drawing. So if you're wondering how I'm kind of having these eyes come out a little bit, thinking about the eyelids around it, looking at those little parts where if you look over at the picture, you can see the lights reflecting, right? Same with the nose. I can tell there's a darker spot of the nose and there's a lighter spot of the nose. How much of the mouth am I seeing? You know, all these things I'm trying to figure out as I'm working this in. I don't go overly detailed with this. This was a pretty quick and rough drawing. Um, but overall, just kind of want to get an indication of some of the lights and values in the picture and really just show you how quickly you can throw something in that looks pretty realistic. Like I could definitely go back in and, and finish this guy up and have a pretty nice solid looking raccoon drawing. All right, I promise I don't go into de this much detail with all of them. So I'm gonna finish this guy off with some whiskers and we'll jump into our next raccoon. Okay, so for this guy, I wanted to show you the drawing I did and then what it looks like without the photo right there that you could see really quick. And that blue grid is my head sizes going down, right? So he was about three heads high, give or take, um, a little bit longer if you add in the feet there. And of course you can make your own exaggerations as well. But raccoons, they're all kind of like, they're put together, right? They're, they're kind of like a really wide based cat in a way. So you don't want them to go too long or they might start looking like a bear or something like that. So that's why it helps me again to draw the head structure um, or the head size going down. You don't have to use that tool, but it's really just a tool that helps me when I'm drawing proportions of literally anything. <clears throat> so the body shape that we're thinking about you know, we, we know the head shape is kind of like an oval, a little bit like a football with pointy edges. Um, I like to throw in that round shape for the nose. And then what I was thinking about for the body is they have these really nice curved backs, but then a really kind of flat, stumpy bottom. Um, it's just kind of like where their skin kind of hangs over. They have like a loose kind of skin back there. And so I really wanted to emphasize how flat that bottom was on all of them as I was drawing. And then I could always just build and round up the structure a little bit more as I went and added feet onto that and stuff, of course. But um, I really liked how flat they looked when I was looking at the pictures. So I use this in a lot of the photo references when I break it down. All right, again, always thinking of the arms as a tapering shape. It's thicker at the body and it gets thinner as it goes to the hands, right? This works for every single creature, humans included. So kind of getting in those chicken wings right there and then just throwing in an indication of the feet. All right, you wanna just kind of block these things in nice and light and remember that you can always come back. Don't start with the details um, or else you're gonna get yourself lost because there's a lot of details going on in these raccoons. All right, one signature of the raccoon is to make sure you keep those ears nice and round. They don't have pointy triangular ears like cats. So one distinction that you can make just straight off the bat in your drawing is when you're drawing the ears, keep them round, kind of like a bear shape, a little more oval, um, but that's gonna help them already appear to be less of a cat kind of quality. So I lighten my under drawing and I'm just kind of coming in and I'm attaching the face a little bit more or I should say the snout a little bit more to the head because um, I didn't want it to be so separated like it looked with the circle. So kind of putting it in there, nice narrow snout on there, adding a little fur texture and kind of figuring out some of those eye shapes in there as well. This raccoon's looking down a little bit in particular, so we don't see the mouth. Um, we just see its nose. So get to kind of play with that structure in there and looking for that kind of robber mask pattern that they have. They have the white pattern on their nose. And then of course those really cool eyebrows that give them like a, like a human expression almost. So again, I find those eyes right there at the top, 
of the mask, right? So it just lets me know exactly where I want to land it once I'm happy with the mask in there. And now I'm kind of thinking back to my anatomy. When we looked at that skeleton structure, what's happening? I know the arms are coming in front of a rib cage, right? So I wanted to show that elbow protruding out a little bit, not just being um, a part of a, like a, a lump, essentially, right? I can't see much of the structure when I look over at the picture, but I wanted to create some of the structure in my drawing. So we're drawing in a little bit of the feet. I want to show that overlapping shape here again with this arm. So this is just really me really trying to emphasize that this front of the arm and the chest is in front of that back half behind him, right? And then you can see here his back leg was kind of poking out there a little bit. So I wanted to throw that in. And of course I just kind of want to capture a little bit of the color on the striped tail there pretty iconic for raccoons. They have that big puffy tail and it always has those black stripes going across it. So when you're drawing creatures like this, um, creatures that can look like other creatures before you detail them, you want to think about necessarily like what's important when you're just doing a sketch. Um, so for me, it's like the little robber mask, the round ears, and then some indication of stripes on the tail and instantly it should be recognizable as a raccoon. Of course, there's other details to raccoons, but those are kind of like the significant qualities that pop out in my head. Just gonna add a little tone on this guy's face, a little on the body there, and then we'll move on to our next trash panda of the day. All right, so you can see for this guy, really, I just kept it nice and simple, just keeping that square bottom, right? I really went with the football-shaped head there. Um, this guy has such a great expression going on. It's like he just got a treat or something, and, or he's about to get a treat, and he's really happy about it, right? So it was really fun to copy this expression. So definitely exaggerate it if you can. If you're comfortable with your drawing, go for it. Play it up. So I have my head structure in there, my little grid that lets me know. He's, again, about three head sizes, a little tiny bit longer if you count in the bottom of his foot there. Um, again, I'm just kind of using this to figure out where things place. So figure out his face a little bit here. And then I'm going to move down to the body. This is where I wanted to figure out um, the heads on my picture. Remember, another reason I do this head structure too is because um, no matter how big or small I draw his head, I know all I have to do is take that head shape that I drew and go three heads down. Um, so it keeps my proportions no matter how big or small I shrink or enlarge something. If I wanted to draw a humongous raccoon and I just want it to look exactly like this, I know that the humongous raccoon is going to be three heads tall and it's just going to have a really, really big head right so that's something that just helps me all right keeping this guy nice and simple is going to help with his cute expression as well so he's got his little hands up there and keep him nice and stubby When it comes to animals, it's kind of like the less you show, the cuter they are. So like the shorter and stumpier their limbs look, the generally the cuter of an animal you're going to have. All right, I had to move him over so I could fit that tail of his. And you're going to throw on a little indication of those stripes there, of course. And right now my guy is a little bit bald here for a raccoon. I gotta go in there and add in some ears too. There we go. A little indication of the eyes. And then we are gonna move on after I give this guy a cute little smile.
So remember when we were looking at that muscle anatomy and I was talking about hanging, right? And hanging onto trees. So similar to uh, pandas here, they do hang in trees sometimes, right? When they live in a more foresty environment, they're able to climb. They have those really dexterous fingers that allow them to do a lot of things, not just grab onto um, food and trash in the area. So here we got a guy hanging in a tree. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting pose to draw. You can think about weight placement a little bit like that, so you can play around with it, have fun with it. Also, if you can't see it underneath the um, cheat sheet drawings that I have on top of the photo, which I'll take off um, halfway through this drawing here, but he also has his tongue out. So definitely play up that feature right there. It's really cute. All right, so I want to throw in that boxy nose and then give a indication of the mouth a little bit. Gonna throw in some of the body after I find my head shapes here. So again, that's just kind of helping me. This guy is about three and a half heads down because his back leg is extended a little bit to hook onto the tree. And I really want to draw that body kind of stretching out nice and long there. So I couldn't see too much of this back leg, but what I was thinking back to is that muscle picture where we saw that really square muscle structure. Again, it was the red panda, but we know that they're a little similar, right? So I wanted to think about what was going on in there and kind of helped me place something in there. I couldn't see a lot of it. We don't see much in this picture. Um, the picture is getting cut off at the bottom there, so I'm kind of just guessing, but... You can always make a better educated guess when you know the anatomy of something, which is why we go over it. All right, we're gonna draw this guy hooking onto the tree here. And again, remember if you're drawing something like an angle of someone looking like they're holding onto something, please draw the thing they're holding onto. Even if you wanna change it, it could be a pole, it could be whatever you want this dude to be hanging onto. Just don't have a flying panda with his arms out. It's just, it's scary enough. I don't need more superhero pandas. One is enough for my life. All right, I liked his hand coming around the edge there a lot, so I wanted to draw that little detail in there. You can see the little claws holding on to the bark as well. And then we gotta get that face in. So a little tongue sticking out as he's looking over. Kind of looks like maybe he just saw something really tasty. I think the pizza place nearby must have put out their stale pizza at the end of the night. And he's about to swoop in there. All right, so we're just kind of coming in, shaping things out a little bit. Not gonna spend too much longer on this guy, but just kind of want to make sure the details look right. You can add a little fur structure in there if you need to. And we're gonna jump from this guy to our last raccoon of the day. I switched up the angle a little bit here, so we're gonna get a slightly different view. So like I was saying, muscle structure was really hard to find with raccoons. For some reason, so was a side profile shot. I don't know what it is. I think people just love looking at that little robber mask face of theirs. Um, they do have a really cute face, so I understand. But I did find this majestic picture of this guy posing for us. So I wanted to incorporate it so we can kind of get a little bit of a side angle here. Because when we're looking at the front, we don't really see how long their face is. Look how long that snout is. It's really coming off their face far from their eye, and it's really pointy too. Um, it's not super square. Of course, you know, it's gonna change raccoon to raccoon, but um, as a general, we can kind of look at this as an average mark and use this to kind of inform some of our other drawings. Even when we're drawing from the front, it's always good to know. So we don't see a lot of the body here because um, unfortunately this picture was getting cut off at the side. 
But again, we have drawn a couple raccoons today, so I think we can do our due diligence here and make up a little bit of that body. Um, if you remember from any of my past videos, again, if you're not going to draw something, try to give me a reason, you know, give me a reason you're not drawing something. Where did his butt go? Why are you not showing me his raccoon butt? Put it on a pillow. It doesn't matter, right? Have him sinking into a couch or something. That would be really funny. Try to think of a silly way to um, get rid of it. I'm going to try my best to make up a little bit of it here. I do have a little bit of that rock or stump or whatever that is in front of him that I can use to throw in. But kind of want to challenge myself to see if I can just figure it out a little bit. So without the cheat sheet over the photo there, you can really see how pointy that snout is, right? Um, almost a little reminiscent of the Bandicoot uh, video that we did, where they also had a really long pointy snout. So you can kind of see some, some relations here in the family. All right, so from this angle, you want to remember, you're going to see one ear on, attached to the head. It's going to be on the head, inside the head. And then the other one's going to be just poking out a little bit from behind because it's attached to the other side, which we're not seeing right now. So you want to keep that in mind. What can you see? What can't you see? All right, overlapping shapes. Where are you going to place your lines? Where are your lines going to be darker? Okay, getting in that robber mask and the eye there. And from here, all I have to do is just kind of make a fluffy guy. So I know they had like really rounded back, so I just kind of want to throw that in a little bit. And I can see his legs bent there. And you got a good amount of arm in here. Again, they have such a heavy fur level that it's just really hard to place some of their bone structure sometimes, but you gotta just do your best and think back to what you know. As always, guys, I want to say thank you for watching. I don't have any animal recommendations right now, so if you guys want to let me know, please put them in the comments. And I'm going to end this video with a little treat here. We have a raccoon that visits our house on a daily basis and eats the cat food we put out. So I have a video of that for you guys. So enjoy that and have a great day.